What is up ladies and gentlemen, my name is Scott and welcome to Fudge Muppet. Today we have a sensational video for you. Here we are big fans of RPGs, if you couldn't already tell by the vast amount of builds and other videos on the channel, but we are very aware that modern day streamlining has watered down some of the RPG features in the Elder Scrolls franchise. But thanks to modders, we have a community of dedicated people who continue to produce awesome mods that help put the RPG back in the role playing game. This video is 5 essential mods to make Skyrim more of an RPG, adding the complexity back into the game. These are the must-haves, and when they are all working together, it feels amazing. You'll get so much more out of the game. These mods will help you play a much wider variety of characters with many more builds and role-playing opportunities available. We use many of these for our modded builds and usually use these as a staple. All of these five mods will be listed below in the description, so let's get right into the good stuff. First up, we have one that is going to add so much to your game, so many role-playing and gameplay possibilities. This is the Ordinator Perk Overhaul. Ordinator vastly expands on the Skyrim perk system, reducing the number of boring perks that just increase flat damage, but then adding so much more variety within every skill tree. When in vanilla Skyrim you played a one-handed character, you would have three choices of specialization perks for maces, swords, and axes, and even at that, they weren't that great when you really get into the nitty-gritty stats. Whereas in Ordinator, there are three separate skill branches for each of the weapon types, featuring multiple perks and perk ranks, all with unique effects. There is also a branch for dual wielding, a general branch for one-handed fighting, and then they even added a dagger perk branch, with perks that involve you doing sequences of power attacks which cause paralysis. With Ordinator, it is possible to have a character to essentially just focus on one-handed as a dagger and mace dual wielding character, with plenty of options to choose. The cool thing is that I've only talked about one-handed. The same treatment has been given to every other skill in the overhaul. Magic is especially good with the overhaul. The alteration tree has some crazy perks like orification, allowing you to turn a paralyzed foe into a pile of gold, or dimension door, allowing you to teleport to a marked location, or then there is Vancian magic which vastly changes your playstyle and approach to magic. Definitely check out our Vancian mage build if you want to see this perk in full effect. In the illusion tree there are brand new ones like Dream Thief where you can sneak up on sleeping enemies and steal their dreams for a 50% illusion magic effectiveness bonus or then Dream Gears which allows you to take that sleeping victim and make them your dream thrall. Destruction gives you powerful new skill branches that truly allow you to become a pyromancer or cryomancer mastering a single element to all new levels of perfection. Perks that set the ground on fire around you or emanate static fields. There are just too many to talk about. The magic is crazy, but they even managed to add some flavor to the blander passive skills such as smithing. Have you ever wanted to play a character that is an engineer? Well, now you could take someone like our Mechanist build and add in the Dwemer Autocannon perk, granting you a power that allows you to deploy a Dwemer Autocannon that fires in the direction your crosshair is pointing, and on top of that, there are more perks in the tree allowing you to get dual cannons. Want a trained rabbit to retrieve stolen goods for you? Well, with the pickpocket tree now, you can do that. Lockpicking now allows you to use bear traps, sneaking allows for tripwires, all kinds of nifty variety has been added. But my one and all time favorite thing about this mod is what it does to the previously very very bland speech tree. It adds a branch all about dragon shouts allowing you to feel like a true dragonborn. With the perk ends the universe listens, shouting restores points of health, magicka and stamina equal to your shout cooldown in seconds. You also gain experience when shouting based on your shout cooldown, which means you can use shouts to level up speech and on top of that you have force redoubled which at two ranks gives you a 50% chance to reduce a cooldown of your shout to three seconds. With Windborn, shouting summons a divine wind, speeding your movement by 15% and increasing your attack damage by 30% for 15 seconds. But yeah, I could talk forever about all the cool stuff in this mod, but what I have to say is that it really does put the RPG back in Skyrim, with just the sheer amount of options for playstyle variety. One of my favorite mods of all time, 
definitely give this one a try. Next up, we have an essential mod for anyone who loves a good backstory and is sick to death of having to be a prisoner stuck on a carriage, dragged to be executed. This is the alternate start live another life mod. If role playing is your thing, then this is the mod for you. Instead of having to do the whole Alduin segment, the whole who are you, sorry we're gonna have to execute you part, you can instead choose from a multitude of different beginnings in the world of Skyrim. You can start the game as a character who lived in Skyrim all their life and is now joining the Stormcloaks to fight for their homelands. Or you could be a bandit who is about to leave camp and try and live a noble life. You could be a Thalmor agent from the embassy who ends up betraying all he knew. You can be a humble merchant at an inn, or a traveller who just came to Dawnstar from a long voyage. Maybe that ship was shipwrecked and you find yourself having to swim out of a sinking ship. These new possibilities really enhance role-playing capabilities, and even for those who don't care for role-playing, it allows you to skip the whole Alduin situation and you can just go straight to being a Dark Brotherhood recruit, or perhaps an orc in an orcish stronghold, which by the way is another cool thing. There are plenty of options available to everyone but there's also race specific options for every race. So like I mentioned, you can start as an orc living in an orcish stronghold, a Dunmer refugee in Windhelm, or even Ravenrock. You can be a Khajiit working for one of the trading caravans. There are so many cool options, you can even be a vampire hidden away in a lair. This mod is a staple for anyone wanting more RPG elements in Skyrim. One of the things Skyrim lacked compared to the other games was diversity of the races. Each race used to feel vastly different to playing another race. The resistances, powers, and bonuses were more drastic, giving each race a certain feel to it, but Skyrim lost that to a degree. However, the Imperious Races of Skyrim mod puts that feeling back, making every single race a truly unique experience to play. So now each race has modified beginning attributes, meaning that everyone doesn't just have a flat 100 in health, magic, and stamina. For example, a Dunman now starts with 95 health, 95 stamina, and 110 magicka, representing the elven magical affinity. And an orc only has 80 magicka to begin with, yet has 115 stamina and 105 health. The regeneration rates of these attributes are also changed. High Elves regenerate magicka the fastest, but Orcs the slowest. However, Orc health regen is among the fastest, and their stamina regen is the highest, allowing them to be the relentless Orc berserkers like they are in the lore. But these kinds of changes aren't the only that come with the Imperious Races mod. There is much, much more. The most impressive changes are the ones to the passive abilities and the active powers. The new changes make you feel far more like the race you are, and allow you to feel that impact as you play through the game, having race-related quests that unlock new powers. So let's look at the Bosma for a second. Their first ability is Green Pact, which allows you to ritually eat the corpses of the dead, gaining a percentage of their attributes. There is also Wild Senses, which allows you to detect moving targets in a large radius by standing still when sneaking. And finally, there is Harrier, which allows you to summon a spirit bird that marks animals to kill for bonus loot. You can see how all these abilities are closely related to the Wood Elf lore. The hunting aspect, the cannibalistic green pact aspect, it's really cool but there is a final ability called Beast Tongue which is unlocked after you have used the Harrier ability to track down and hunt 10 beasts. The Beast Tongue ability calls a nearby predator making it a permanent ally until released. Now that is so much cooler than the vanilla Skyrim. Argonians now swim faster in water, also being harder to detect. Elven Supremacy makes skill more effective for a High Elf when it reaches 100. Nords have a cool ability called The Purge, which shows off their xenophobic tendencies. At level 10, 20, and 30, you can pick a race that you deal bonus damage to. So once I played a xenophobic Nord Stormcloak, and at each level, I picked the three Elves, Dunmer, Bosma, and Altma, so then I became a more proficient Elf Killer. And then you throw Wuthrad on top, and it's true truly an awesome build. It's neat things like this that add more role-playing to the role-playing game, so definitely grab this mod if you're keen. Now, there is basically a meme on our channel surrounding the Atronarch Stone. The Atronarch Stone is hands down the best stone. Even if you aren't a mage, it still just means 50% of the time a spell will be absorbed and won't damage you. That's some crazy defense, it's crazy powerful, so we use it in a lot of our builds. Hence the meme. 
But with the Aurora Standing Stones of Skyrim, everything changed and there is a reason to use other Standing Stones. Vanilla Skyrim had many Standing Stones that really weren't worth using, but this mod overhauls all of them, making them unique and powerful in their own right, causing you to consider all your options. I know for one, I never used the Apprentice Stone, but it has now become one of my favorites for a mage. It comes with a passive ability called Eager Student, meaning all spells are cheaper to cast and novice spells cost no magicka at all, which I think is a really cool feature and it's especially useful at the start of the game. It also comes with a power called Mana Cost, which rapidly regenerates magicka, but may randomly teleport the caster and others nearby, which can lead to some crazy ass moments. Then have a look at the Lava Stone, which has a passive called Undying Love, which means every 30 minutes you are resurrected after taking a killing blow. Or look at its power called Lover's Kiss, allowing you to choose a target which you can summoned to your side in battle at any time. Want to feel like a powerful assassin with the quickest blade? Well, the Shadow Stone gives you that feeling with its two benefits. You have the passive Blur, which increases your movement speed in combat, and the power Shadow Step, which allows you to instantly teleport behind a target a short distance away. As if that isn't the perfect standing stone for a Shadow Scale Argonian assassin. So long story short, if you want another element of role-playing and gameplay opportunities added, then absolutely get this mod. Now in a fantasy RPG, magic is one of the coolest things. You can swing a sword in real life, steal something, shoot a bow, but you can't summon a Daedra or shoot enormous fireballs. Now if you were to compare the magic of older Elder Scrolls games to Skyrim, the others win hands down in terms of variety and types of spells. Well, this sweet little mod called Apocalypse Magic endeavors to return many of the old spells, as well as adding in a whole bunch more, making for a really, really awesome some spell catalog. This mod adds a total of 155 spells, 31 per school of magic, plus scrolls and staves. Oh, and when you combine this with the magic perks from the Ordinator overhaul, by God, are you in for one awesome role-playing experience. There are some nice and simple ones like Long Stride, which is a novice alteration spell increasing your movement speed, allowing you to get over those long stretches of land faster. Actually, how about I just list a whole bunch and you should be able to gather what they do, but if not, even more reason to try out the mod. You have Ray's Wall, Raynos' Fins, Wither, Tharn's Prison, Fabricate Object, Entomb, Detonate Lock, Conjure Dramora Curl, Conjure Lich, Conjure Zavali. Sorcerer, Ice Shiv, Electrosphere, Shock Nova, Scorching Hands, Fingers of the Mountain, which is a nice little Oblivion reference, Ghost Walk, Evil Twin, Mind Control, Shroud Walk, Slay Living, Nature's Balance, Blood Boil, and many, many, many more. There are just so many types of spells that really help fill out the applications of magic in the game. With both the Ordinator perk overhaul and the Apocalypse magic mod, you can play some of the most creative playstyles to date. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the fifth essential mod on this list. So as a little summary and refresher, the five essential mods to put the RPG back in Skyrim are the Ordinator Perk Overhaul for all those sweet new perks and skill tree applications, the Imperious Races of Skyrim for the awesome race abilities and fun role playing, the Alternate Start mod for some fresh beginnings and fun backstories, the Aurora Standing Stones of Skyrim mod to make all the Standing Stones far more useful and unique, giving your character some extra oomph. And finally, the Apocalypse Magic mod, which is essentially a huge booster pack for all the magic in Skyrim, giving you hundreds of new gameplay opportunities. There it is, ladies and gentlemen, the five essential mods to make Skyrim more of an RPG. We really hope you enjoyed this video, and perhaps we will do more like this, recommending mods for certain kinds of gameplay or desires. Let us know what you would like to see in the comments below. All of the mods mentioned have links featured in the description, along with links to our Twitch channel, Patreon, and social media links like Twitter, which by the way is the best place to reach us. Thanks so much for watching guys, we really, really appreciate your support of the channel and just have an awesome day playing Skyrim. I'm Scott from Fudge Muppet and I will be back again to nerd out with you again next time.